Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's talk about some stamp tools. There's a wide range of prices out there. Are the expensive tools worth it? Absolutely. Well, are the inexpensive tools going to work for us? We're crafters. Budget, always an issue. Well, let's take a look at these tools. In fact, let's do three segments here. So up first, let's talk about our border stamps. See what we've got there. Up second, geometric. And third, my favorite. Let's do some combinations. All right. So anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over here, get started. The first rule here, as always, let's just have fun with it. We're not at work. We don't have due dates. Now, I hope you find a design here that you like. But my bigger hope is that one of these designs is a jumping off point to all kinds of possibilities for you. That's what I'm hoping. So again, talking <laughs> talking stamping on camera, it's a whole different ball game when we're in our shop by ourselves, but not the biggest point. We're just getting an idea. So let's start right here. Technically, this is a border stamp, but to me, it's more of a floral stamp or even a geometric, and we're gonna look at that. Now, we've got a left and a right, and I've got these marked. Really with me, it's more of this one and that one as opposed to left and right. But let's take a, let's get one stamp in here and let's see what kind of an impression we get. Well, actually, for the inexpensive tools, that's not bad and it looks pretty good. Let's jump over to the other. Well, very nice. Let's run this out a little bit. All told, that's a nice looking border design. Be a perfect place for a spot, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's jump over to one of my favorite ways to use this. And we're gonna use an anchor line on this. So let's drop in an anchor line. Good. Now with either, let's start right on that line. And I'm gonna butt this long curve right up to that edge. Okay, that looks good. On the other tool, what I'm going to do so let's take this long curve here, and I'm going to drop it right into the long curve on that one. This will make a little more sense when we see it. Now, when we see it, now this can be a little deceiving because the edge of the tool is not the edge of the impression. Let's work this down. And let's drop in one more. That is a cool vine work. But notice too, we've got a little bit of a geometric thing going. I like that design. So all told, the inexpensive tools giving us a good impression and a good design. Let's reset, jump over to one of the old school designs. I didn't bring this up, but it bears mentioning. We're using cased leather. We've got a good video on this, but that's one of the reasons we're getting a good impression with our stamps. Night and day difference between cased and leather that is simply wet. Okay, so let's jump over here. We've got two stamps with this. Well, good, clean impression right there. In fact, that'd make a nice barb for our barbed wire set. Our second, same thing, but now we've got a flower center. Good, clean, crisp impression. Even an inexpensive tool looks good with our cased leather. So let's do this. Let's run this down our edge, see what kind of a border design this makes. Actually, that's a pretty good borderline. Yeah, I dipped a little bit. In fact, on this one, that stamp right there, that's going to make me absolutely crazy. But again, we're just getting an idea. We can go so many ways with this on the geometric side. But right here, there's one design that I love. That looks pretty good, and again, that'd make a great geometric pattern. 
but I like the design that emerges when we stack these tools together. Very cool design. So again, with our inexpensive tools, we're just moving right along, creating beautiful impressions. Let's reset now, because we're gonna jump over to three tools that are my all-time favorite. These tools are a little bit tougher to get just right. We can do a number of things with these, but we're gonna need our anchor lines. So I call this the railroad tracks, one of, one of my all-time favorites. I've used and loved this for years, and I put it on all kinds of projects. Again, there's a couple of ways we can go with this. Now, like I said, these are much harder to line up. So let's drop one in, our anchor line. Very crisp impression. All right, let's stack some of these. A little bit tougher to get these just right, but I like that edge, okay? Now I've got two anchor lines. I've separated these with one half of an inch, or about 12.7 millimeters. So let's start right here and run down one side. Okay, so we've got one side. Now we're gonna reverse our stamp. So let's drop this on our inside anchor line. Let's do our best to get that right in the center. Okay, so now we've got a serpentine going. Could be a little cleaner. We actually have a way to take care of these over stamps. We're gonna look at that in just a minute. Okay, let's jump over. Now I've got a three quarter inch spread, or about 19.05 millimeters. All right, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna offset these. Let's do our best to center that. Well, now we've got that same serpentine, but to me, now it's got a little bit more of a Victorian look. It's a great tool. That actually looked good on a cuff or a belt. Okay, let's jump over to the next two, our final two, because these are even a little bit tougher to line up. Now, the saddle folks can nail this one every time and probably freehand. I'm just hoping for the best, but again, not the point. We've got a sample here that when we take our time in our shop, we'll see a big difference. We'll look at that in just a minute. But right here, the I-beam, old school tool. We've probably seen this design in several different forms, but let's start right here, get an idea of what we're talking about. Okay, yeah, basically an I-beam. Rather plain tool, absolutely not. We can do some cool stuff with this, okay? We've, we have a smaller tool. There we go, same thing, just smaller. Let's concentrate on the larger, a little bit easier to see. Now, one way we can go with this, and I'm gonna to try to take my time here without being over ridiculous with time. Ah. Uh, well, I got one off but basically we get a beaded border, okay? Let's jump over to the way we most commonly see this. So I'm gonna drop in one, I've got a, uh, two lines here, half inch split. For our second tool, what I'm going to do is line up the foot of the tool on my, on my anchor line and the edge of the tool right with the edge of the previous tool. Okay, let's do this several times. And one more. Now, I always get in trouble when I say one more. Well, we've got somewhat of a serpentine here. We can see it. Well, there's a way to fix this. We can always use a swivel, but it's not really going to give me the same width. And what I end up doing is cutting too deep. A bar grounder? Absolutely. 
but I have yet to find a smooth bar grounder. So I take my own and I simply sand the design off of that. But let's do this. Let's go out of the box a little bit. We're going to go with a flathead screwdriver. Yeah, out of the box. But notice it's got a larger end on it and I've sanded that down. Here's where this works for us. So let's drop this, drop this in. It happens to be exactly the same width as the base of that tool. Well, there we go. Very clean, very smooth. Notice very few overstamp marks, but now we can see that serpentine line. But a cool thing with this tool, like right here, I've got a little bit of heavier stamp. Let's drop this in and we can smooth that out. Yeah, there we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's jump over here because we're gonna do something similar. So our first tool, let's drop that in. Okay, our second, let's offset this. Now our next tool, let's give this a one half inch spread. Okay, we're gonna drop this tool in on the same side. And let's reverse and offset. Now let's take this, give this a quarter inch spread, or I'm sorry, half inch spread. Okay, so we've got that. Doesn't really look like much. Right here, dad gummit, that's gonna make me crazy. There's always one in a crowd. Okay, let's come back with our screwdriver. What I'm going to do is fill in on my edges. Okay, so we've got that. Let's come back in and smooth over some of our over stamps. And even a screwdriver will help us out in our shop. Very creative. This just screams for an additional stamp design within these ovals or maybe some spots. They'd actually be a little offset. That's pretty cool. Now, like I said, we have a sample in our shop when we take our time. That's what we're gonna get. Very clean, crisp impressions good deep lines. All right, so I'm going out on a limb here, but let's do one more because now that we've got the use of our screwdriver with the railroad track tool, again, back to this, there's something cool we can do in our corners. So let's drop in two on each side of our corner. Okay, we've got that. Let's work out just one or two stamps. Okay, we've got that. So this makes a cool corner. Let's take our screwdriver and let's just fill in right here. Do our best to take out our over stamps. Well, how about that? That makes a cool little spade point and it works just as well on a dip. So many ways we can go with these tools, literally unlimited possibilities. We've got some pretty cool designs on our stamp heads and we're getting a clean, crisp impression. For the most part, that's what I'm looking for. In fact, there are stamps over here I'm going to use from here on out. All right, so segment two, next up, let's look at some geometric stamps. I hope this is good information for you. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.